despite the rain, there's some faithful fans here to watch the game. Hand off to the short back of the ball. It's fumbled now. Coach Craig Hill thinks the Khakis have it. No signal yet. It looks like St. Craig's did recover their own fumble. However, the second fumble for St. Craig's, they recovered both of them. About a three-yard loss. It's third and ten now for the Greyhounds. So St. Greg's forced to the third and ten call here in the early going. Real tough to make third and ten when you can't pass the ball. They haven't thrown past once yet today. Now with a double tight end set, full house backfield. It's a power look for St. Greg's. And a handle from number 50, Ryan Below breaking forward. I'll tell you what, he's a big guy. But he only gets about five yards, maybe four. It's going to be fourth down for St. Greg's on their own, on the Khaki's 45-yard line. Khaki's come in. Last time they showed safe defense. Looks like they're going to do safe again. A little confusion for the academy. As they're going to go for it, the academy's trying to get their men off the field. And it looks like they're going to have to call some timeouts. The Khaki's were in there looking for the return. St. Greg's came out looking to make a play. And the Khaki's got caught half here and half there. They had to call timeout to bring them off. So the weather certainly has played a part. John Morrison, as I said, felt it would be an equalizer, and it has been so far today. It's a wet, mucky day here at Lake Forest Academy. It's been raining for about three hours now. There are puddles on the track short of the field. See the cheerleaders decked out in their rain gear day. Still here to cheer for the fans, however. Now the academy goes back out on the field with their starting defensive unit, not anticipating return. Anticipating the defensive stand here. Fourth and eight. St. Greg's has not shown pass yet. This would be a great time for it if the ball is not too slick. 5.03 left in the first quarter. Phil Smith steps under center. I backfield this time. Gives a look to St. Greg's. I think the receiver stood at the bottom of the screen. Here's the pitch. Malo rumbling around the right side. Breaks one tackle. Brought down short of the first down. Let's take a look at this one again now. Malote rumbles around his outside, being pursued by Mariano and Christian Holland. The initial man there, number 44, Joe Gariano, had a shot at him. Finally flushing him over to, it looks like, Brian Bonato took him down. So the Khakis take over on downs, first and 10 on their own 43-yard line. Zach Steffens under center with the eye back. Twins to the top of the screen for the Khakis. Steffens will throw, rolling out to his right. Still running, lets it fly. The ball is complete to number 34 for Lake Forest Academy. That's Kiernan Aston. Nice gain of about nine yards. Second and ten for the Khakis to try to get something going over midfield. 49-yard line now at St. Greg's. Rafa Kalajian brings a play in for Zach Steffens. Tim Martin, the fullback, behind Steffens. Twins to the bottom of the screen this time. Steffens hands to the fullback. Tim Martin barrels forward for the first down and more down to the 38-yard line of St. Greg's. Nice gain. Nice job of running there by Tim Martin. Here you see it again. Martin barrels forward. Nice job of blocking up front, too, for the Caxies. Joel Facito had a nice block on that play to open them up. So the Caxies will have first and 10 from the 39-yard line of St. Greg's. Eye back for the Caxies. Now in motion, going to the top of the screen is the receiver, Brian Bonato. Stephens hands off to the fullback again. Mike Davis, who barrels forward, picking up about seven yards. Here you see Bonato in motion. Steffens handing off to Martin. He cuts up, almost stumbles, but then is able to cut it outside. Does a nice job of fighting through three tacklers and staying on his feet to get the most he can get out of that play. Kernanation got away with a flip at the end of that play. He's very lucky. Now 
we'll have second and three for the Khakis. Clock continues to run as there's not much past the day. I back to the academy. Receiver split to the bottom of the screen. Stephens hands off to the fullback. He's now running, running out, but it's fumbled. Mike Davis picks it up, tries to keep going, but he's taken down. It looks like he'll lose about three yards. Mike Davis just couldn't get the handle on that ball, and I know John Morrison was probably hoping for him to get this ball on. Here you see Stephens with the dive fake. The ends, both ends go to Stephens right now. Davis is open, but he can't quite get the handle. Right there, he usually coached the player to drop on that ball, but he was able to get up, but there's nowhere to go once he finally gets the handle on it. So three fumbles today, but none turned over, as each team has regained their own fumble. Now a pro set for the academy. I back. Tim Briggs showing blitz on a defensive end. They stay, though, and Stephens throws the ball to Joe Garano off his hands. Garano came out from his tight end position with a little crossing route, but hard to get a spin on that ball when it's soaked. Here you'll see it, Garano taken off from the top of your screen. Just releases a little bit. Stephens is looking for him all the way. Sees him here, but it looks like it just slips a little bit. You can see not a tight spiral on that ball and off Gariano's hands. So the academy is fourth down and six. They're going to go for it, being this deep into St. Greg's territory today. Single back, two receivers to the top of the screen. They fake to the single back, roll off to Gariano. This time they get it to the tight end, but he's going to be dragged down short of first down. Down about two yards short. If they can hear me out in the truck, I still got uh, the director in my headset. Two oh one left. The academy goes over on defense. I know John Morrison was hoping to get things rolling a little more quickly today, but the rain certainly has stopped in his efforts for that. St. Greg, first and ten. Catches with the two deep zone. There's the power looking. We started a little early there. Number 42 for St. Greg, the right tackle, Gary Dominguez, a little anxious on the play, and they'll have to march him back. So it'll be second down. First down now. Check that. Five yards. First and 15. And without much of a passing attack, it's real hard to make those yards on such a rainy day. Caxi faithful here in the stands with their umbrellas, hoping to see some offense from the Caxi. They've seen some good defense today. Power backs again. Hand up to number 50. He's the workhorse, rumbling forward for about a two-yard gain. This could be one of those days where seven points wins it for a team. Number 64 for the academy on the tackle. Joel Facito having a nice game thus far, both offensively and defensively. St. Greg's base offense is the dive and the isolation play, both of those up the middle. This is Chris Dossois coming to you from Lake Forest Academy, Taxi Fields. Sets up second and 11 for St. Greg's. Again, the full house backfield. And again, the handoff to 50. And he's hammered in the backfield this time for a loss. That'll bring up a third down. He'll lose about a half a yard. Joel Facito again with the tackle, getting a lot of penetration as they're running right at him. Now St. Greg faces a third, third and 12 situation. Taxi coaching staff anticipating a pass here with a three deep zone. Smith barks out the singles. He does throw it, but a very wobbly pass. Even if it had been completed, I don't think they would have got very far on that. Here you'll see it again. Smith just couldn't get a handle on the ball at all, much like Steffens earlier in the game. You can see him bring it back and almost throws it sideways, sort of pushes the ball, looking to get it to Marquise Ortiz, but couldn't make, make it happen. Now it's fourth and 12. The academy will try to get their first punt return of the day. The punt is off. A much better punt this time. The lets it drown. The Caxes let it bounce. Not wanting to get that ball on a wet day is Mike Davis letting this ball bounce. And the Caxi get the ball in St. Greg's territory on the 49-yard line. Mike Davis came up, had a thought about receiving that ball, 
It's on a wet day like today, if you let it slip your hands, that's just a fumble. Good job of letting go. So the Cactus come in on offense now. At the end of the first quarter, they get a break and will change sides. Just walk a few yards, 0-0 zero, zero at the end of the first. Cactus take about 10-yard stroll and spring break likewise. Being in midfield, the refs don't have to go very far. Just a step for them from the 49 to the 49. Cactus probably have their managers working hard to keep the balls dry today. Cactus must be really disappointed. I know John Morrison wanted to get something going against St. Greg today. Really needs to get his first win, and St. Greg's likewise looking to get their first win. But on a wet day like today, real hard to get anything going. So far in the first quarter, John Morrison's done a better job of passing St. Greg. St. Greg with the 0 for 1 attempt. Looks like John's going to be able to get the short routes. Maybe probably not much deeper. And he'll probably want to try to get the ground game working as well. Now Rodney Allen in the game at the tailback spot. Fullback is still Tim Martin. Stephens under center to start the second quarter. First and 10 LFA from the 49-yard line of St. Greg. Barking up the signals. Almost a fumble now pitched to Rodney Allen, who's got some running room. Nice job of blocking, and now he's off to the races, cutting up, cutting back, keeps moving, does a nice move. 10-5, touchdown, Lake Forest Academy, all at one fell swoop. Let's see this one again. A nice job of running by Rodney Allen. Good up and back, a little juke move by Rodney. Nice job of blocking by his receiver. Here you can see almost a broken play. It looks like he got stuck on Tim Barton. Stephens was able to get it back and get it to Rodney Allen, who does several juke moves. Fakes the cutback here, comes up, and then just turns on the Jets, outrunning everybody. Who was it again downfield? But Joel Sestito with a nice job of blocking, and Rodney rumbles into the end zone. Now, Lake Forest Academy set to kick the extra point. Nope, they're going to go for two. Academy going to go for two now with the eye back in the pro set on a wet day. John Morris is perhaps not confident about getting in. And we got a false start by Lake Forest Academy. Joe Garano got off a little bit early. Smart, smart play call by John Morrison. Hard to try to get that kick down. Hard to hold the ball, hard to get it off the block. So now John Morrison's face. Instead of uh, three yards, now he's back to seven yards for the two-point conversion. Pro set again, eye back. Stephens under center, Rodney Allen is the tailback. Stephens going to try to run the option. Just hangs on to the ball. Nothing home. So the Lake Forest Academy Cats will have to settle for the touchdown. Six-point lead, 6 nothing. Lake Forest Academy. Here in the second quarter, 11.49 to go. We're going to show you that touchdown one more time now. Here you can see what we were talking about before. This almost ended up being a broken play. But Stephens able to pull it out. Brian Bonato does a good job. I don't know if it's in your picture with blocking for Rodney. He Gives himself a nice lane there. You can see Bonato. And now Rodney, after the one juke move, cuts it back and turns on the Jets. Best man, to, best guy who had a chance for him for uh, St. Greg's was Elian Atin, but Rodney too fast for him. Outrunning Ruben Garcia as well. So now the academy will kick off. And then really set to kick it off. Two men back for St. Greg's, number 27. That's Ortiz. And looks like number 40. Got that number 80, Julian Atin. Jeanette kicks it off. This is a nice end of her end kick taken by the short back for St. Greg's. Rumbling forward. He's got a nice hole. Fighting his way up still on his feet. And they finally drag him down at the 40 yard line. On the bottom of that pile for Lake Forest Academy, Richard Haupt, the freshman. Also, number 51, Ross Carpinelli. So, St. Greg will have first and 10 on their own 40-yard line now. 11.35 left in the second quarter. 6 nothing to go for the Cactus. Schmidt steps up to the line. It's a regular full house backfield with Ryan Malo, number 50, is the far tailback. Handoff is Malo, rumbling forward and taken down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. St. Greg's really cannot get their running game going today at all. 
Chris Holland with a good job on the tackle. Then Greg, living with the ISO and the dive play, might have to try to get it outside if they're going to make something happen here. Lake Forest Academy doing a very good job up front stuffing that there. Scouting report told them to look for it up the middle, and they've gotten that so far and shut them down. Now the Academy in the two deep defensive zone. Smith under center. This time pitches it to Malo, trying to get outside. Does a better job. Still on his feet, rolling, twisting, twisting for a first down. Still on his feet. One man to catch him. Still going down to the 10-yard line. Finally taken down by Kieran Aston. Kieran Aston, linebacker, chases him down and drags him down to the 10-yard line. But not after a nice, long 50-yard gain. So you'll see it again. Here's a pitch to the outside. Good job of taking out the linebackers by St. Greg. Good job of running by Malo, twisting, turning, breaking tackle. Here in Aston, however, doesn't give up. Finally getting a hold of him at the 10-yard line. Nice job by the Cactus on the final defensive stand, but unfortunately they let him get away. Now, first and 10 for St. Greg's. On about the 10-and-a-half-yard line, so they're going to have an opportunity to get him first down here if they can get it inside the goal area. Handoff is to the up back, number 34 for St. Greg's. Now St. Greg's almost down to the five-yard line. Here you can see it again. Caxton probably anticipating it going to number 50, but this is going to Carson, number 44, and he pulls his way down to the five-yard line. Taken down now by Kieran Easton. Kieran's had the last two tackles for Lake Forest Academy here. Second and about six yards for St. Greg's. Smith under center, double tight end set. One man's a slot back for St. Greg's that we haven't thrown yet. Handing off to the short back again. Carson, but he's taken back, hammered for a loss by Lake Forest Academy. Christensen Holland takes him down. So inside the red zone, the Cactus come up with a big defensive stand. That'll bring up a third down play, third and goal for St. Greg's. We'll call it third and seven now. St. Greg's going to have to go into their ball of tricks and try to come up with something different. The Cactus seems to have sniffed out the dive and the outside play. St. Greg's comes up to the line. Cax using a tight stack formation on defense. In the eye, St. Greg's single slot receiver to the bottom of the screen. Here's the pitch to Malo, rumbling forward. He gets down there close to the goal line. On the one-yard line, looks like they might have to bring the chains out. Let's see if we can see this again. Here he is, rumbling out to the left side. He really is a powerful runner, this Malo. Really breaks through the tackler. Keeps going. See if you can see him go down to probably about the four-yard line. Let's see if he's if he's short of first down. They are calling it short. Fourth down, says the box. Oh, they're going to bring the chains out now. They're on the – see if you can see the replay again. Here it is again as they measure it. So you can see him rumbling forward. See if you can tell where he comes down there. Looks like they marked him just inside the one-yard line, so they're going to give them first and goal for St. Greg's. First and goal for St. Greg's, about one and one-and-a-half yards. Cactus is screaming, cheering for a big defensive stand here. 8.40 left. Smith under center. Barking out his signals. Power back again. And it looks like they started a little early on the quarterback sneak. No flag on the play. On the keeper, however, he picks up negligible yards, maybe maybe about a half a yard. You can see on your TV screens how close it is. Smith now looking to the sidelines for his call. Caxi, nothing doing up the middle. Second and goal. St. Greg's with a second chance to tie the game here. Smith under center in the power eye set. Barking out the signals. This time goes to the workhorse, 50. Malo working around, rumbling forward. Touchdown just does break the goal line. Joe Gariano makes the initial hit, but Malo is able to drag him into the end zone. Couldn't get it up the middle, so they went outside on it. Here it is again. Malo reversing out, or Smith reverses out and picks it to Malo. And you can see this is all him now. The block, the blocking breaks down. Tim Martin actually is held there. And he takes Joe Gariano head on just rumbles right past him, just breaking the goal line. 
touchdown, 6-6 six to six here at Alumni Field with 7.49 to go in the second quarter. Think Drake now deciding whether or not to kick or to go for two. This rainy day certainly has made it for a different game here at Alumni Field. Not much offense at all. Both teams getting essentially one big run on their way to the score. Rodney Allen has the nice run for touchdown for the Cactus. And Ryan Malo with his long, long run to set up a touchdown of his own for St. Drake's Greyhounds. Now they're ready to go. St. Drake approaches the line. And they're going to go for two here. The eye back is St. Drake's. Receiver splits on top of the screen. Slot receiver on the bottom now. The handoff is to the short back. He's hammered there. Harvey Carson gets nothing. And it remains 6-6 six to six with 7.49 to go here in the second quarter for Lake Forest Academy and St. Gregory's Greyhounds. Like we were saying earlier in the broadcast, defensive struggle if weather forces that today. And it looks like we're going to see a touchdown here again. Looked like 7-2 uh, started early, however, it didn't get called for it. You can see Malo does a good job of just rumbling forward. He really is the workhorse. Rain subsiding a bit here at Alumni Field. Now, Cash is set to return the first ball of the game. Back to receive for Lake Forest Academy he is. Number 25, Mike Davis, and number 32, Tim Martin. Oh, check that. It's Chris Dietzel, number 12, back to receive. And Greg set to kick it off here. See what kind of return the academy can set up in this wet weather. TV screen, it may look a little foggy here. I assure you it's not. It is foggy on our cameras. But it is plenty wet. And uh, St. Greg tries to pull a fast one on Lake Forest Academy. Kick off the 45. Referees notice and bring it back to the 40. St. Greg employs six tacklers to the bottom of the screen, leaving himself short with four on top. We'll see a St. Greg six to their left. Here's the kick, a very, very short kick. Takes one bounce, taken by number 32, Tim Martin, up back, trying to find some running room, still on his feet, working forward, and finally tripped up at about the 41-yard line. Real short kick. Tim Martin did not expect to get that ball. Did a good job of feeling it and rumbling forward. So now with 7.42 to go, the clock runs, and Lake Forest Academy will start first and 10 on their own 42-yard line. Now, Steffens up under center. I backfield receiver splits from top, bottom of the screen in a pro set. St. Greg's showing, showing blitz, putting a lot of pressure on him. Steffens hands to the fullback. Tim Martin, who is hammered right at the line of scrimmage. Good defensive stick by St. Greg. Might even be a half a yard loss on the play. So the catch is faced with second and 11. Academy desperately trying to get the running game going. So far, all they've had is a big breakaway. Now, Brian Bonato goes to the bottom of the screen. Stephens under center, barking out his signals. Hands to Rodney Allen, the tailback is taken down at the 47-yard line. Picks up about six yards. And here it is again for you. With the lead block, Tim Martin, Rodney Allen. Goes forward, coming through, and finally brought down by 44 Carson, the fullback for St. Greg. Third and four now for Lake Forest Academy. Working tight on the near hash mark. Here's the eye back, Aaron Aces, retrieved on the bottom of the screen. 
catch it short a little early. The ball's fumbled. Steps is taken down. We have a broken play. Looks like they're going to call offside, jumping on the part of St. Bray. Here is again, see if we can tell who comes forward. No, from the screen, it looks like they can actually start early. Maybe a problem with the signal calling there. Can't actually players were cheering, however. The refs sorting it out, keeping the ball dry as they figure out who did what to whom. And it is a false start for Lake Forest Academy. That will march them back. And a personal foul on the defense, however. So, looks like they call a personal foul on taking of Zach Steffens down to the ground after the play was blown dead. So, they move forward. They're going to move the chains, and that will be a first down for Lake Forest Academy and a good break, a real nice break for Lake Forest Academy. At the end of the play, you might have seen Zach Steffens was taken down after the play was whistled dead, and that must have been where they threw the personal foul. So, first and ten now inside St. Drake's territory at the 44-yard line. Academy again with their pro set. Rodney Allen is the tailback. Stephens under center. And the ball slips out. It's a fumble. Looks like Stephens may have may have covered his own fumble. Real hard time getting the ball from center to Stephens this day. Here you can see it again. Joe Mariano, the center, just couldn't quite make the connection with Zach Stephens. The ref trying to wipe the ball off and help Academy a bit, although I'm sure they're not playing favorites. And now the catch is faced with a second and 11 with about a one-yard loss. Rafa Kalajian up at the top of the screen now in a twin set. Pass to the short side of the field here. Oh, and it's a poor pass. And the ball is ruled incomplete. It was picked off initially by Rick Guerrero. However, he dropped the ball as Kieran Aston stripped it from. Nice job of not giving up by Kieran Aston, and they blow that incomplete. What a break for the academy. Steffens again, just having trouble throwing the ball, and he blames him with such a wet day. So now third and 11. Caxton just can't get anything going here in the wet weather. Too deep for St. Greg's pro set for the academy. Steffens under center. He'll run the option with Rodney Allen to the left this time. Rodney Allen with some room, but taken down. The blocker sh shredded off his block. He was able to hammer Rodney Allen for a loss. So now it'll be fourth down and about 12. Now you see it again. Rodney Allen gets the initial pitch after the Steffens, but can't quite break through. It looks like Joe Garano had a little bit of trouble sustaining his block there. Fourth and 15. And now should be a kicking situation for the academy. Joe Gariano steps back to punt. St. Greg's up in fake. Haven't seen the fake punt once today. Morrison chooses to punt it this time. Gariano gets off a wobbly end over end kick that's going to roll. Take a taxi roll. Keep rolling, keep rolling, and good job. Good kick by Joe Gariano in the wet weather down to the 25 yard line of St. Greg's. So no return on that punt. And now the Caxton just bring the defense back on the field. First and 10 for St. Greg's from their own 25-yard line. St. Greg's offense comes out. I wonder if we see another running play here from the Greyhounds. Malote is the tailback. Single receiver split to the bottom of the screen. They pitch to the outside. Malode trying to turn the corner, being held onto the backfield, and finally dragged down for about a five-yard loss. Make that about a three-yard loss. Now here you'll see, I think St. Greg's is recognizing they're not going to be able to get up the middle, and they're rumbling outside. Joel Sosquito holds on to him initially, and the rest of the catch is coming to set him up. So now St. Greg's second and 13 here. 3.26 left to go in this quickly passing first half. It goes much quicker when the ball is kept on the ground as much as it has been today. St. Greg walks out, second and 13. Power backfield as is tradition now. Single receiver splits at the bottom of the screen. Smith hands to Halp. 
something around to the outside, but taken down was Malod. Tanner Nason hammers him there. Just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Give him about one step past the initial line of scrimmage. And now St. Greg's forced into a long third and 12 situation. Catches now with their two deep zone. Going to cover two with the other cornerback up anticipating the outside run. You think John Morrison might even give up on that and bring the other safety up on a blitz. They haven't gone deep all day. Now, I think Greg has two receivers to the bottom with the eye set. Will they try to pass their way out of this trouble? Instead, they throw it straight up in the air on the rollout to the right side. The receiver coming back for St. Greg's does make it, but actually for a loss. Let's see if we'll see that one again now. Smith, the quarterback for St. Greg's, rolled away from the two receiver side. There is faking the handoff to number six, Mullad, and actually runs into him, which causes the trouble. He's being chased there by Rafa Kalajian, pushed to the ground. And they might give him credit for a one-yard pass completion on that play. Now, it's the chess game. They force Tannery anticipating the fake. St. Greg's showing punt. And they do kick the ball. This one's a little better. Rolling, takes a big St. Greg's foul, still rolling down to about the 33-yard line of Lake Forest Academy. So both kicking teams get some good rolls. Now the Academy will take over here with 127 left on their own 33-yard line. Six to six here in the first half. Lake Forest Academy would certainly love to get something going here at the end of the first half. Love to put another point up on the board and go up in halftime. Don't want to be tied 6-6. Six to six. Now the catch is with the eye back. The pro set as they've used pretty much all day. St. Greg showing the blitz. The handoff is to Rodney Allen trying to find somewhere to go. Now breaks it out outside. Turns nothing into something. And we have a flag on the play. Might be calling a late hit on St. Greg's there. Rodney with a nice six, seven yard gain, eight yard gain. Here you see it again. Rodney Allen turns nothing into something as he rumbles forward. Brian Bonato does a good job blocking Mason and Rodney gets down there. Looks like they're going to call attacking with the helmet by number 71, Teak Malloy. So now, Cashin being marched forward on the basis of the penalty. Second time the Cashin has had this much gain on a penalty. Another 15-yarder takes them down way deep into St. Greg's territory. About the 44-yard line of St. Greg's with 52 seconds to go. Ravi Urs, the academy hustler down to the bottom of the screen. Stephens hands off to Rodney Allen on the pitch. Breaks the backfield tackle, trying to get his footing and another flag on the field. Rodney Allen's got about three on that. It's just hard to run anywhere down there today. Here you can see it again. The dive fake, Tim Martin. Stephens has had a pitch every time. They haven't gone to Rodney Allen yet. This time, however, Malloy, the workhorse running back, almost had a good shot at him. And Rodney, again, does a nice job of breaking forward. Looks like Stephens might have pitched a half a second too early, but who blames him when you see a big body like that running at you? Malloy is able to get past Stephens, go over to Rodney Allen. Rodney Allen, luckily, is faster than his counterpart. Rodney coming out of the game now. A little disgusted with the play. Looks like he might have twisted his ankle or hurt himself. Tried to walk it off. Now, they're marching it back on the academy after the penalty. Now, Academy is first and 24. Stephens rolling to his right. Breaks one tackle. Let's it fly, and it's going to be thrown out of bounds. The Academy on that long, 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 long penalty had it all the way back to a first and 24 situation. Stephens just could not get anything to happen for himself. Here you see him rolling out to his right. Two blockers stepped in. However, number 74 for St. Greg's. That's Chris Shebley was able to make some pressure on him. Stephens will lose one tackler. Finally gets it off and pushed to the ground, but he just can't get a zip on that ball. It's too wet. Clock sits at 19 seconds to go in the first half. Six to six. Second and 24. Stephens again rolling out to his right side. Pumping, pumping, pumping. Has his man open. 
dribbler foul pass. Intercepted, how over. No, they're calling him out of bounds. They're saying that the same man who had the interception last time, Rick Guerrero, did not catch it in bounds. They said he had one foot out of bounds. Here it is again. Stephens had more time this time, but the, on a second and 24 situation, St. Greg's knew there was going to be a pass. There's nothing doing out there in the defensive backfield. Taxi, keep, Taxi running back's trying to make blocks, trying to make blocks, and Stephens, you can see, cannot step up, can't plant that front foot and get a good zip on the ball. You can leave it up for grounds. Nice camera work there. You can see his foot clearly out of bounds. Guerrero, again, robbed of the interception. Third and 24, nine seconds to go now. Taxi's in the pro set. Stephens on the center. This time hands to the fullback. Tim Martin struggling forward, hoping to stay on his feet long enough to get the clock to run out here, it looks like. And that's the end of the first half here at Lake Forest Academy. On a swampy, wet day, 6-6. Six to six. Taxi's rolling below off to the locker room, as does St. Greg. They'll probably talk about how to get something going on the ground, how to stop their running attack how to get their running attack going. Two big plays in the first half set up two touchdowns here at Alumni Field. Six to six is your score. We'll see you after the half. So onside, I think perhaps a unexpected onside. Looks like he just uh, twirled it off his foot a little bit, but uh, St. Greg is going nuts because they did recover. This is Christo Swan. I'm joined now by Bill Bowler for the second half of the game. And, Bill, do you think that was a planned onside kick? Oh, it definitely looked like a planned onside kick. Uh, the weather conditions uh, right now are in favor of keeping the ball out of the hands of one another. And uh, it looks like St. Gregory's has it first and 10 at the 49-yard line of St. Gregory's. And now at a 6-6 six, six ball, game, ball game here to open the third quarter, St. Greg with the surprise onside kick, and they have again their full house backfield. Number 50, Rich Malloy, Ryan Malloy, the tailback who got most of the work in the first half, and he opens up the second half with most of the work, rumbling out to the left side, breaking forward for about a three-yard gain. And he really works hard, Bill. In the first half, I know uh, you were off coaching the golf match. Luckily, we have you back with us. You didn't see as much of him, but he really works hard. He rumbles forward, twists and turns, and gets a lot of yards on his own. He looks like a very good size back uh, for a tailback. He almost looks like a fullback. Uh, I got to look him up right now on the roster, and it looks like he's about 5'10 and about 160, 170 pounds. And they got him back there in the eye position again for the second down. So they really have the power back to working now, trying to use it. And they go to the up back this time. That's Parsons rolling forward for about four more yards, probably about third and six for St. Greg's. They've been trying to get the ground game going, you know, well, neither team can pass well. Well, it looks like the smart decision with this kind of weather is, is to keep it on the ground and pound it out. Uh, you know, not looking for a big play. You know, the onside kick is a gimmick that will work maybe on a, a day like today. So let's see, it's a big play, third down and about seven. They certainly caught the taxis off guard, third and Six or seven now for St. Greg's with the power backfield, double tight. Here's a pitch to Malat working on the outside, running slow, taken down by the helmet, and they're going to call a face mask yeah. penalty there on Rodney Allen, you know, that's and maybe another penalty of some sort. It looks like uh, there could be a personal foul, two flags down. Yeah, that was kind of a shame. They did a nice job defense making those plays. LFA, they wound up stringing them out, getting them running from sideline to sideline, but then the tackle was high and grabbed the face mask face mask by Rodney, and that, that's an automatic first down. Now, it's really odd looking, Bill. Malat looked like he just sort of tiptoed and then decided to try to run. I don't know if he didn't have a grip or was slipping or what. Uh, I think he's a little bit slipping and sliding here. You can see on replay, but then right there you can see Rodney is just tackling him up high. And a big man like that, that's the guy you need to go down on his legs and take him out. Rodney has got to be a little bit smarter out there in that situation. So now first and ten for St. Greg's in Lake Forest Academy territory on the LFA 40-yard line. And St. Greg's a little anxious. Yeah, number, number 74 seven jumps out. Waterman, Corwin Waterman jumps out. And that's a big body to have jumping out. It's pretty obvious. He was a good uh, uh, few snaps and counts ahead of everyone. And I know the Caxi coaching staff at halftime were talking about just playing their game, staying within themselves, and trying to execute, execute fundamentally. And uh, that's what they'll do. I think they'll shut them down. But uh, right now, penalties are decided. Well, right now in the situation, too, the game is basically a two-quarter game mm -hmm. only with the score tied. So mistakes are going to hurt that team. 
want to win. And first and 15, Smith hands up Malat to the left side, and that uh, outside play is not coming to work for St. Greg. He just can't get started, can't make that turn. No. It doesn't look like the blocking is there to stop the end, but at the same time, they got him running, as I said earlier, sideline to sideline. And, you know, if you have a back doing that, you know, you're going to give time for your defense to fill the holes and make the big tackles. Joel, uh, Joel Mariano, Mariano with a big tackle there. Nice play. It looks like they ran a little counter, uh, sent the two up backs one way and brought him down the other way. You know, they were running up the middle unsuccessfully, went outside mm -hmm. successfully, and now they're going outside unsuccessfully, see if they can change their scheme. Now, second and 21 after the big loss and the penalty for St. Greg with an eye back. Oh, no, it's a power back. Fumble. And the fumble, again, we had about four or five turnovers in the first half, three or four fumbles, a couple of interceptions, but St. Greg picked up their own fumble. It was recovered again by Smith. Smith is not one of the biggest quarterbacks I've ever seen, so I'm going to take it they don't have a passing game. And they have not shown <laughs> a passing game very much at all in the uh, first half. They have fumbled it. Uh, I think that's their fourth fumble now, but – Recovered all of them themselves. It looks like they probably have a philosophy that, you know, if they're not going to pass, they're going to use a quarterback as someone just to hand the ball off mm -hmm. and use their best athletes as carrying the ball, which is that, you know, if you don't have the numbers and the athletes, it's probably a good idea if you are already going to throw in the idea that you won't pass. Third and 21 now for St. Greg, way back on their own 49-yard line after being on the Cactus 40, trying to the run reverse. reverse play, and it does not work out. It's all mixed up. The ball handed to number 20, Ruben Garcia, eventually on the reverse. Yeah. But there's nothing it's a nice happening. play. It's something, you know, it's nice. Uh, the line, again, for uh, St. Greg's does a nice job at, at first of holding the blocks, but they're just a little too far back in the backfield to make this play work. Also, again, the conditions are tough to run a play like that today. That was 27, Marcus Archie. The Cactus assumed they were going to fake it the last two times they tried to punt, didn't send anyone back. This time they do have a receiver back there. That's number 25 for Lake Forest Academy, Mike Davis. Okay, well, it looks like we got someone on LFA that was a little bit anxious and jumped off sides. So they'll go up five more yards closer. It'll still be fourth down in a, and probably about 15 yards still. The Academy lucky that it wasn't one of those fourth down and three situations right. where they would have got a first down on it. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I remember we, that's what we were talking about, a lot of times where those penalties came back and really hurt them. So now Mike Davis stands back at his own 20-yard line waiting to receive the punt. St. Gregory has not been very impressive with their punts today. And Cactus going for the block chance. might have gotten a hand on it. Davis will let it roll, and it takes a tacky bounce back to the 35-yard line. And that was uh, down to about, yeah, exactly at the 35-yard line. Uh, now this is the first time, second half, that LFA will be on offense. And what have they been doing the first half? Chris? They've been trying to run that option, Bill. They threw a few times unsuccessfully because Stephen just can't get a grip on the ball or he can't step up and throw it too much pressure on him. Okay. They uh, got it outside to Rodney Allen and also a few nice dives to uh, Tim Martin in the first half. The running right. game is where it's happening. Now, this would be a real nice uh, series to see something happen right away and score quick. They've been in this pro set all day, Bill. Again, they come out in it to start the second half. Karen Ace is received on the bottom of the screen, and they dive up the middle to Martin, who fights forward maybe for a yard or two, see where they spot the ball. Yep, Kalajian, Rafi Kalajian now in starts the second half for the Cactus at tailback. Or rather, fullback. Tim Martin getting a breather. Robbie Ears in the game now. Okay, probably are starting off, maybe, you know, thinking that they can soften them up in the middle and maybe try to bust something to the outside. They had a few trouble, a few uh, troubles exchanging snaps in the first half. Stephens barks it out, and they got a fumble again. Right on cue, they have another bit of trouble, and a good job jumping forward by Rafi Kalaji. Real heads up, just to fall on top of it. About now it puts them in third down and about seven yards. I know this wasn't the way they wanted to start. Not at all. You know that uh, coming down the second half, there it is again. You see Kalajian jumping forward. And it's a way to keep to his head up. Keep it for a positive yard. It's third and seven for the academy. They're going to have twins to the top of the screen, Brian Bonato and Kirsten Ace, Kiernan Aston on top of the screen. I back to the academy. Zach Steffens barking out, rolling out, being chased, pulls up. Now he'll run the ball. That's Still a nice run. He can take Good job. Outside. He might he be gone. Go. He's running to the 40-yard line, to the 30. One man to beat, trying to turn on the Jets. Finally run out of bounds about the 15-yard line. Nice job by Zach Steffens, the quarterback. Good job of rolling out, seeing nothing, and tucking it down. You know, Bill, in the first half, he wasn't doing that. He was trying to throw it. I wonder if they told him to hang on to it if there was nothing to get through the air. You know, that's probably uh, what they said at halftime. They said, you know, Zach, there's no reason to force it in this situation. And 
as you can see right now, he is looking for his receivers. There's nothing there. The blocking isn't there. So Ooh, he's just turning it up and he makes a real nice individual run here. Well, you know, there's not all the blocking that he needs, but the guys are coming down the field to try to set up to pick a fence. And he took it to the outside. So it's first down at the... First and 10 now for the taxis there at about the 13-yard 13. Uh, 13 line. They try to go straight up the middle. Rafa Kalenjian maybe about a yard, yard and a half gain there. Not much happening in the middle, you know? Well, you know, again, I think everyone's keying on it. And the weather conditions are kind of tough. You get your footing. But, it, you know, as we just saw the last play, you get one big play and... Before you know it, you got six points on the board. Now second and eight for Lake Forest Academy. Down just outside their own 10-yard line. Taxis with the pro set again. High backfield, Stephens barking out. The tailback is Rodney Allen. Rodney Allen gets the call on the ISO play, breaking That's up the nice middle, play. still on his feet, struggling forward. Nice job. Coming that'll be close, close to a first down. That'll be very close to first down. We'll see if Paul Dunlap's chain crew gets a chance to come out and measure it. That was a nice run. Again, there you can see the blocking straight ahead, and uh, they're putting bodies down on the ground. And they're going to say that it is short of the first down. Third down and about two yards. I am eyeing it from up here. Well, I think they're going to come out and measure now. Where well, are they? Now they are going to bring the chains yep. out for us. So it's a little bit closer than two yards, I would say. Looks like uh, Rodney Allen struggled for right at the end of that play. Might have gotten the mm -hmm. ball, stretched over that first down marker. Here it is again on the screen as they make the measurement. And it's going to be a first down. I can hear them cheering as you watch the instant replay. Rodney Allen really does a good job breaking that for right. himself. And you can see right there the ball does get to the first down marker. I think you have to be very conservative right now and with the play calling, and that's what they're going to do. Four downs, they're at about the three-yard line. First and goal. I would say from the three-yard line now. I think they know that uh, Coach Morrison probably wants to put the ball in someone's hands and run it straight ahead for four downs for hopefully a six points. And here it is to Rodney Allen again, the man who got them there, struggling forward now, still on his feet, but hammered backward, taken down to about the yard large line of scrimmage. Looked like he was forward a little bit and then got taken back. So yeah. Here it is again. Waterman did a nice job here. He was on his knees, and he basically gets one hand on him, number 74 from St. Uh, Greg's. St. Greg's. Here he is right there, and he's yes, down he on his knees. He just beat his block. And it was at uh, 64, Chris Holland. Joel Cicito, number 64. Oh, Joel Cicito. So now with 3.50 to go, the Taxis face second and goal from just about the same spot, two and a half, three yards outside. Karen Aces looks wide to the top of the screen now. And Steffens trying to run the option, rolling out, throws an underhanded forward pass, which is a pass, not a fumble. I don't know if that was a, a wise decision by Zach in that situation. I think a lot of times coaches would rather have him just take the sack. Uh, could have been picked here off again. here on replay. You Looks can like see. they're trying to run the option, and the, they're not maintaining the four-by-four four relationship that you want between the tailback and the quarterback, four right. yards by four yards, and he tries to make a pass happen. Definitely. And you can see also Rodney got ahead of the, the play in that situation, so it's tough to make a pick uh, behind the line of the scrimmage. That's where he got into the pass situation. Looked like a strange little shovel pass of some sort. Now, taxis come out third and goal from the three. Morrison would love to punch it in here. Can't really kick on a day like today. The handoff to Collage. Nope. He's looking through the end Seven zone with the pass. Out, big on That's the pass. a nice pass. Nice pass, but a little too high. Looked like Incomplete. Robbie Earth could not quite get up there and see it. Could not come up and grab that one down. He faked the dive, rolled out nice to the right side. Got a good zip on the ball for the first time here in the second Did half. Did a very nice job there with the, without having anyone in his face. Uh, he was rolling out, had plenty of time. Uh, ball was just overthrown a little bit. Robbie went up and just uh, missed it. So now the Caxes face the fourth and goal. They're going to go for it. Hard to kick today, right, Joe? You oh, definitely. You got to go for it. You know, in the other situation, uh, let's get a safety maybe to pin him here. You know, the other thing is right. You're going to if you don't get it in, you're going to give them the ball down at about their two yard line. So now fourth and goal, a handoff to the tailback. Rodney Allen breaks, busting forward, but he's met just beyond the line of scrimmage. They'll be short. They will not get it. Lake Forest Academy will turn over on down. St. Gregory uh, did a fantastic job. You know, here on replay, you can see they went back to that play right up the middle, straight ahead blocking, and St. Gregory just filled the hole, and they turned it over probably about at the two-yard line. So it's first and ten for St. Gregory Nothing at their two, and you got to give their defense a lot of credit. They stuck in there, and they made the defensive uh, stop that they needed to make for four downs. So the score remains 6-6 six to six with three minutes 
10 seconds to go here in the third quarter at Alumni Field. You know, that old uh, coach is saying about momentum or something. Maybe this might be a momentum turner for St. Gregory. This is Crystal that along stop. with Phil Bowler here. St. Gregory ball now. St. Greg with the eye backfield. Jason Smith calls timeout. Doesn't seem to have enough men on the field. I think they got a delay a game penalty. He started counting heads and when he got up to the line. And uh, they must be missing a body because he turned around then to signal a timeout to the official. But it was too late, so it'll be a delay a game penalty, half the distance to the goal line. So now it's going to put them at first down and probably at the one-yard line. So you can see, again, he's just confused looking around. You know, you Bill? can see him just starting to count how many men he has on the line. You would coach a quarterback, I'd call a timeout right there, wouldn't you? Right. Well, definitely. You know, if you're not... If you see that there's some linemen that are missing, well, Smith call the just timeout. a sophomore now, stuck into a tough situation, being the first quarterback in 45 years with a brand new program. Yeah, as you said at the top of the telecast. That's the other thing is for back. everyone. This is uh, for themselves. This is, is this their third or fourth game of the year? It's their fourth game. They came in 0-3. Okay, and it's their fourth game for most of these guys in their life that they've ever played. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know there is going to be some confusion out there, and there's going to be missed signals. They're learning the game while each week goes on, and you know, next time he'll do that situation. You can see right now the coach in the huddle there counting out the bodies too. Coach tell him who's going out and who's staying in. Phil Thomaswick. Mm -hmm. I think you got the pronounce. You pronounced that correctly. You, you grew up in Chicago. You, I think you got a better chance. I, I could probably do that, but I, don't ask me to spell that one. So now St. Greg comes out first and 11 after that penalty. And hopefully there's 11 players out there now too. Now he looks a little more confident about who's on the field. Smith's under center. Cax is in their two deep zone again, anticipating the run. The it's handoff a straight right to the goal off. line, and a big pile of bodies meet the lot. And they're going to give him a slight gain. Oh, second down. If, even if he got it one yard. Let's see if they even give Chris Wheeler a step over there, holding the box for the mm -hmm. chain crew. 2.35 to go in the second half. They're the cheerleaders moving up and down the track, doing a great job in this inclement weather. And the rain has looked like it just picked up again, and it's uh, coming down pretty heavy. So right now for LFA, they need to come up with a defensive stop just like St. Gregory just did so they'll get the ball back in good field position. You know, Bill, I just get a feeling from the weather today, if the Caxes could get a safety here, they might win this game 8-6. to six. Uh, The first team that scores has the best chance of winning it right now. Mm -hmm. There's nothing Early happening. in the third Everybody's quarter. Everybody's getting tired and it's getting muddier. Mm -hmm. The handoff to the lot, rolling around the I left side. I think we side. got that safety. And we got the safety. Coach Hill puts two hands above his head. And yeah. the ref does likewise. Two-point safety for Lake Forest Academy with two minutes to go in the third quarter. I'm kind of surprised that St. Gregory decided to go uh, to the outside with the option. I mean, you're down at the one-yard line. Here it is on replay, Chris. You can see that they're, he's going with the, the pitch. Or no, it's just a straight it's handoff. Straight handoff. And, but he's trying to take it to the outside. And he's a good, I'd say, two to three yards in the end zone there on the tackle. two or three bodies to get out there. So, nice job by Lake Forest Academy forcing the safety. Joel Cicito, I think, was on the tackle there for Lake Forest Academy. So now it's an 8-6 game, and now we get a uh, punt by St. Gregory's. You know, Joel Cicito's had a fine game so far, Billy. Good. Had a lot of uh, good action in the first half. Well, that's what you'd like to see from a senior. I mean, Joel, right now, they've had a, their tough luck so far this year, and they haven't had the, the wins that they'd like to have. And for a senior, he's their leader out there, and he's got to set the tone, and he hasn't quit. And when you come up with a big play like that, everyone else on the team gets fired up. So now after the safety, a free kick for St. Gregory's one of the interesting phenomena of football is this free kick. Nobody on him, all the men lined up. And back to receive the kick is 25, Mike Davis, the Mike defense Davis. academy. But they, they're all bunched up here short. Mike Davis just short of the 50-yard uh, line. Chris Geisler, Geisler there with right him up also. there. And also who's uh, Tim number Martin, 32, 32, Tim Martin. And they have not been impressive punts so far today, although he's had a rush on them every time. We'll see if St. Gregory can kick it a little more. So is it Malat who will be doing the kicking? Might as well give it to him. He kicks it a little better this time. You see by Robbie Orr, his first the punt reception of the day, hammering forward and takes it right down into St. Gregory territory, about the 35-yard line. So Caxes, with a two-point spot, also have great field position. Good yeah. job by Erz. Yeah, it was about a 27-yard punt, and he received it about at the 47-yard line, and that was a nice little Here return. It is again. Yeah, you can see the blocking right here after, it's after hard, the return. It's hard to set up blocking in this yeah. situation, isn't it, Bill? Oh, well, you don't practice block. this too much. I can't see the coaches spending uh, too many times out in the practice field going over our punt return on a, a safety play. So the Cactus come up now with the split back, a little different formation for them. Stephens under center. Would love to punch it in and put this game away here in the third quarter. Reverse out to As Tim Martin. Struggling forward, does a good job fighting 
and he gets a nice little gain there of about six yards. Yeah, Tim does a real nice job there keeping his legs going. Uh, there was a hole right here, as you can see on replay. The hole opens up right here with the lead block. Guys are doing a nice job on the line, and then Tim sees the hole and just takes it to the outside. And now watch his legs. He'll keep driving for the extra two or three yards. Look when he spikes up that one tackle mm -hmm. right at the end, get a little extra. So now we have second and seven for the academy. With a minute to go in the third quarter. These quarters are going by quickly. It's amazing when you Keeping it on ball. the ground. Now Kalaji to the other side, to the left side with much more room. Break four, break one tackle. That should be first down. Gets real close to the 20-yard line. They should move the chains. They are already waved them straight ahead. This is a great run. As you can see uh, here on the replay, Chris. Well, uh, getting the replay going. That's a play before. That was a good run, too. Now, well, oh. we'll play on that, but you guys remember it. A nice run of collagen around the left side. Now, first and ten for the academy. That was a gain about eight or nine. Gregory, 20 yard line in the St. Gregory red zone. Stephens reverses it to Tim Martin, going to the right side. It's just been Martin right, collagen left on the well, side. Well, it's exactly the same play they ran in the first play with Martin. 20 uh, seconds left in the third quarter. Just running it right off the tackle on the right side. And if there's an opening, he's just taking it to the outside. Taxi's trying to run over the big blocks of Chris Holland, Joe Gariano, and Joel Facito. I now don't think we'll get down. another playoff here in the third John quarter. John Morrison, I think, is just happy to let it go. So at the end of the third quarter, the only scoring a two-point safety by Lake Forest Academy set up by the nice punt of – am I off the track here, Bill? I think you are. But – Turn. No, it was basically on uh, Zach Steffen's run. Oh, that's They're right, getting sorry. down inside the the five and had three or four plays, goal to goal, and they couldn't punch it in. And uh, I think Gregory's offense just couldn't move it out. So Zach Steffen's, in a way, gets two points to the academy as he runs it all the way down within St. Greg's territory. I, I think it's really important here on this uh, series at Downs uh, to start the fourth quarter. If LFA can get in the end zone right now, this game is going to be – Pretty much, I, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. I can't say it'll be over, but but I'll say it right now. It certainly looks like St. Greg's is not going to get much more offense than they had in their one big play. You know, in the first half, Radney Allen had a nice big run for their touchdown. St. Greg's and Milan had a big run for their touchdown. And now in the third quarter, Zach Stevens had a large run that led to a mm -hmm. safety eventually for their score. So it's all been on big plays. Right. You know, again, as I said earlier, with this weather conditions, you're going to get the big plays. You're not going to come out here and be able to throw the ball even if you've been working on that offense all week. John Morrison's coaching staff with Tommy Burling, Phil Dolby, Carl Betterfield, Craig Hill, Steve Schuess. Sitting here looking at a fourth quarter now, up eight to six. And they're taking the starting and off the ball. at about the 18-yard line. Second down, eight to go. Steffens with a quick hitter to Kalajian over on the right side. He's still on his feet, marching forward. Rolled, tackled inbounds. You Close can see the first down. Yeah, and that play, you know, what makes that work, you know, we were talking about keeping it on the ground and not throwing it was it was just a drop back, one step, quick hitter, and take it to the outside. Nothing fancy, nothing looking long. That was a nice little play. I think it caught him off guard, and it was a first down, and they're inside the 10. Or are they no, it looks are like about the 11? Looks, looks like, like they're just, just outside the 10-yard line. But on re for a first on down. replay, you can see that it is not a pretty thrown ball, but it got the job done. Now, here's a dive to Martin, barreling forward, working his way down to about the 6-yard line of St. Greg's. Okay, so they're still in a great situation, LFA, because they can uh, get a first down without scoring yet. So this is, again, going to give them a chance to use all three downs. This seems like the first real drive they have a day. No big play on this one. Just a lot of little mm -hmm. six-yard or five-yard little pass plays. Well, it does help, too, when you start off your drive at about the 34 or 37-yard line, just like they did off the punt. So, yeah, let's see if they can punch this one in. Nobody's touched the ball on this drive but Kalajian and Tim Martin. Stephens under center. And again, it's Kalajian now to the left side. Working forward, he's got a first down. Down to about the... That's, if they got a right first down, the then they're at about the one-yard line. Right inside the one-yard line. Let's see, now they're going to call him short. They're going to mark him just short of the first down, about uh, third li three yard line. Now, third and about a half a yard. Now, Rafa just sees it open on the outside and just takes it to the outside. So now, John Morrison sets up call play, split back to the academy. 
This is when you need those mutters. Tim Martin's going to take it forward. He's, he's going to get in the end zone. I think he's in. He does. Touchdown. Touchdown, Lake Forest Academy. The Tim Martin, Rafa Blanjian show here on this drive. Worked him all the way into the end zone. That was a nice little drive there by LFA. As you can see on the replay, it was just a quick hitter. It's the same play that we've seen all the previous downs. Now the rain increases. So they are up now 14-6. to 14-6 to six with 10.05 to go. And it looks like they're opting to go for the uh, two-point conversion. They haven't kicked it uh, once today, Bill. It's just too wet. 10.05 to go, 14-6. to six. Stephens under center now at the eye back. Driving the Allen Hill back to Melange in number 42, the fullback. He pulls it out. Will run himself. Uh, did he make it in? He's I don't short. know. He's, He's just short. Short of the touch of the uh, two-point conversion. Yeah, I think uh, Zach just pulled it up a little too soon in this situation. He didn't look to option on it, and he just wound up being about a yard short. He might be a little gun shy after the poor uh, option attempt they had earlier. I'm a little afraid to toss the ball, but nevertheless, Tax is up 14-6 now, making that insurmountable lead that you were hoping for. Yeah, but it's, this is still a good game because uh, they come down here and score. That gives them the option for the two-point conversion. They got a tight ball game. You know, I like that two-point conversion in uh, high school and college. It really makes a difference. Uh, makes it a lot more exciting. Oh yeah, especially for the coaching staff. You know, if you want to decide, like Coach Morrison, at this situation, you know, knew the weather is bad, but at the same time, if he gets a two-point conversion, there's no way that anyone can tie him. So he needs a, a more than one score to beat him. Now, Demet Riley is set to kick off for Lake Forest Academy. There's about there's 10:05 left in the fourth quarter here. I think Greg's really needs to put something together now. Matt's had some good kickoffs today despite the poor okay. weather. And sends a squibber down, picked by the short back for St. Greg. Number 44. Number 44 is. There's a fumble Harvey on the Carson. play. The Let's see if they're going to call it down. Yes, ball. they have signaled it. Taxi ball. ball. It's about on the hit. Mm -hmm. and, and the ball recovered by Joel. Nope, 84 for Lake Forest Academy. Looks like he got his hands on the ball at the bottom of the pile there. That's Chris Corbin. Chris Corbin. Chris Corbin's a freshman here. And here we are in replay. Chris, you can see it. It's at the end of the run. Ball yeah, he wasn't down yet. Down. Just squibbed right out on the play. You know, wet ball. You know, you He's don't great. have to it kick like it deep. Caused the fumble. Now the Caxes really have a chance to get some cooking here and put this game out of reach. Stephens barking out the signal, first and ten for Lake Forest on the and then going back to the option. Line. Hits to Rodney, who hangs on to it. That's Looks a nice like run. He's going to turn the corner again, and he's dragged down out of bounds at the 25-yard line. The only problem on this, we got a flag on the play. Uh -oh. I don't know if it's going to be called back flag. on LFA or not. It was about back a 20-yard run. Here it is on 36. replay. You can see this time. Uh, Stephens does a nice job being patient, taking the hit on the pitch, and then Rodney takes it to the outside. There's a nice block out there. There's by a hold Ernst. here. They call the hold on the Caxi somewhere right about there. I don't. Uh, see it was go. back there uh, a couple yards. The the flag was thrown. So at the point of point of the infraction, an infraction, they're going to step it off. Ten yards back, maybe about second and. But that was really a nice. Seven. That was the nicest run I've seen since I've been here. The second half. And basically, that was just being patient enough by uh, Stephens with the pitch to take the hit and let Allen take it to the outside. You know, that first half uh, touchdown run of Rodney Allen was similar to that, where he turned a corner, he was able to have a little more room and just outran it. You know, and the other part is you get to the outside of the field, the field isn't as torn up as much. So you get better footing for the guys. You know, so it's very important in the, a day like today in this rain to, to get it going here. Definitely looking out there, the middle of the field between the 40 and the 40, right between the hashes, is real torn up. Now Rodney Allen employing the crowd to cheer along. First and ten for the Caxies. Hoping to get something moving. Now they hand to the fullback, Tim Martin. Pushes forward and does a nice job of rumbling ahead. Get about six yards. Call it second and four or five yards for the Caxies. And here it is again. Yeah, again, they're just going to go straight ahead with uh, Martin, it looks like. That's for Klagen, today. Actually. Is that Klagen? I could only see the two. Well, it's Klagen or Martin. And it's a... You know, again, they get to the line, see the first hole, and they're just going straight ahead, keeping their legs driving. You know John just wants this clock to run, run, right. run. Right, and, and it's doing that. 840, 839, 38 left to go in the third quarter. All right, check that, in the game, fourth quarter. Stephens with the split back. Bobby Ehrs on the bottom of the screen, hands off to Rodney Allen, breaks through the tackles, trying to make the turn. Oh, check nope. that, Tim Martin. Tim Martin. Tim Martin giving Rodney Allen too much. Tim Martin did a run. great job on that time play. Again, Good just just running. using those legs, driving straight ahead, 
trying to look up and find that hole and not quitting until the guy brought him down. Here it is. You can see uh, St. Gregory's in a couple of missed tackles. Again, so trying to tackle him up high. Yeah. Tackling up high. And, you know, for these guys that are moving their legs, you got to just go down low. Everyone's trying to tackle a ball or tackle them up at the. Right. Yeah, I heard it. The crowd also imploring us to uh, get Tim's name right here on the screen. First now the rain is really coming down. Rain coming down hard. Michael Kalanjian fights for for three hard felt yards. In fact, it's getting to the point where I'm having a hard time watching the game out here in the box. I'm gonna watch it on the screen for Put a while. The cactus people have been on their feet, obviously because the benches are wet, cheering on for the cactus here the whole game. 14 to six with 7:40 to go, second and eight now for Lake Forest Academy. You can see on the sideline there's Rafa Kalanjian. And now they're, I think they're trying to get a try ball, and I think that's going to be a tough job to do here. Now the Cactus is split back. Haven't thrown, no reason to. Want to run the clock down. Rodney Allen gets the call. Oh, set in the back, but that's Tim Martin. That's Tim Martin. Again, number 74, and we've mentioned his name a few times already today, Waterman. Waterman does a nice job. He is a big man. He's uh, listed at 6'2", 220. Rodney and uh, block, just sheds his block and just stays at home, makes a nice tackle. Again, you know, you can see though Martin's trying to use his legs to get away from him. Yeah. As the rain sideline. just increases, and uh, I think the team, uh, Lake Forest Academy, is encouraging it They're in this downpour. The cheerleading squad from Lake Forest Academy the, doing the rain dance The now. officials are trying to keep the ball as dry as possible, and one was just standing over it. But I think that's going to be a losing battle here. So it's third and nine. Third and nine now for Lake Forest Academy with the split back. Stefan's going to chuck the ball, and instead he just loses his, up and falls down. He lost his balance and his footing in the mud, and uh, I don't know if they was going to look to throw or what he was setting up to just take it up the middle. Yeah. See if we can tell. Looks like he's trying to cut and then just slip. Yeah, it, you know, again, the middle of the field, as I mentioned earlier in this game, that is going to get worn out, and the footing isn't there. Fourth and 17 now for Lake Forest Academy. Fourth and 17, Drake this is it. It doesn't look like they have a receiving team in. Cactus do not have their uh, punting team in. They're going to not I risk don't the block here. Don't, don't risk the block. Don't risk a poor snap. Just going to try to see what they can get going. They have power set in. Stephen, Jack Steffens hands off to Rodney Allen. Got his name right this time. And he fights forward okay, for about a six-yard game, but they're still short. St. Greg's take over on down. St. Greg's take over the ball. Um, we had about the 34. Four-yard line. Player down for St. Greg. Let's see uh, who might be down. Let's see if we can see there at the end of the play there. Nice game tackling. Looks like Harvey Carson, who made the number 44, who made the tackle, staying down. Now, John Morrison's got to be disappointed that with uh, 5.55 left, he gives the ball back to St. Greg. That would have been, yeah, offensively that time, I know he's probably disappointed that his offense didn't get a chance to punch it right back in. They just fumbled the ball on the kickoff, and it basically could have put the nail in the coffin if they could have scored. On that series, could have ended it early, but now uh, St. Greg's one last chance with number 74, the man you were just speaking of, Corwin Waterman. And he looks all right while he's walking off the field right now. So the Cactus take it over on defense, doing to shut St. Greg's down at least one more time here. Yeah, definitely. This is this win. is probably the big series for St. Greg's. They might not get the ball again with 5:50 left in the game. Definitely not the way the Cactus have been keeping it on the ground. Mm -hmm. So the clock runs now, 5:45 to go in the game. St. Greg's finally getting up to the line, first and 10 from the 35-yard line. We got a fumble, fumble on the snap. Fumble snap. It looks like Smith got it back himself. He's made a career today of getting his own fumbles back. So the Greyhounds faced with second and 10. And it looks like we almost had some motion, too, on the line there on the replay. You could see a few of the linemen taken off a little bit early for St. Gregory's. But there was no flags on the play. I think, uh, you know, the fumble uh, might have shocked the the center by just uh, seeing his linemen around him take off. So now, second and 10 for St. Greg's, second and 11. They lose a yard on the fumble. Their whole game has been going to number 50. Everybody knows in the whole stadium. Let's see if they can fool them or if they're going to have to try to stick with that. No. Again, a fumble, fumble snap. Fumble snap again. You know, Bill, what do you do on a day like today when the ball's so wet? Uh, there's basically nothing you can do. Jackson All you recover that ball, by the way. And I didn't even see who got it. Let's see if we can see it on replay here, Chris. St. Greg's trying to run a little trap there. Ball just keeps squishing out of their hands. And 
it looks like maybe number 34 for LSA wound up with the recovery of the ball. And that's Kirsten. Karen Easton, the receiver, known more for his catching now, playing linebacker, does a good job catching the ball. Now with 4.45 left in the game, I would pretty much say that they are going to just keep the ball on the ground here. Cactus come out with the eye backfield, doing everything they can to get this clock to roll out and get their first win of the year. Hands off to the fullback, and he's met at the line of scrimmage. You can see Waterman back in the game right now, and uh, so as his injury didn't keep him out too long, he met him at the line of scrimmage, stacked it up. But again, you can see only 4.15 will be left in the game. The clock running. Tim and Martin. the water running also, obviously. Tim Martin not getting anything on that drive. Now it's second and ten again. But as the clock runs to keep it on the ground, Tim Drake didn't seem to have much of a two-minute offense, even if they do get the ball back. And especially when we said, too, they're not a throwing team, so it's kind of tough in these conditions. Stefan's going to run the option. Now pitching to Rodney Allen around the right side, working his way through. Nice little stiff arm for Rodney. Gets Almost makes the turn. Gets up to about, about the 26, 27. It might be around. Yeah, so they're going to be about Six yards short of the first down, third and six for the Cactus. Here you can see it again. Rodney tries to stiff arm his way to the first down, just kind of slips off the helmet, mm -hmm. and he's dragged out of bounds. Again, in that play I mentioned it earlier in the, clock. in the quarter, was uh, Zach did a nice job being patient there, taking the hit on the pitch, and letting Rodney get it to the outside instead of him turning it inside. Uh, now the Cactus faced with third and five, Paul, but we're in a four-down zone here. Definitely four down. Stefan hands off to Rodney Allen, working his way up the middle. That's he's a big first down, first and he's down. still going. Finally tripped up down there about the oh, well, probably 15 about the yard line, 16 oh, about 16 yard line. Thank you, Chris. So that is a that's a big play right there. I mean, because they got the first down, they got four more downs to go work with, and they take the ball down to 16. Here's the team again, coming right up behind Christian Holland, just following his blocks, bouncing around, and bouncing he's got his head up and he's moving his legs. You that's know, a, that's a nice run for, the, for these conditions. Now the Cactus come out first and ten on a wet, wet, rainy day that they won't forget as it'll be their first win of the season, barring some unforeseen fact. And Stephens managed to get the entire Stig Drake Lions to jump over. The Cactus are yeah. celebrating now on the sideline. And that's a big penalty also. You know, that's five yards that you might give up. Now they're going to have first down at probably their 11-yard line. And there's 237 left in the game. And a, a young team will make those kind of mistakes. Mm -hmm. And as a coach, you just sit back and scratch your head. Well, you know, St. Greg's came in the big underdog here. 0-3, not showing themselves very well last week. But they played a good game. I think the weather helped a lot. But they certainly did a good job. Yeah, they, the field. you know, and also they got a lot to feel good about, especially with that defensive stop that they made. Four downs at the two-yard line. Mm -hmm. uh, for Definitely. a young team, you, you can use that to carry yourself through a lot of games. Here we go again, Chris. And now Stephens with the split back behind him. St. Greg's First and five. Anxious to hand it off. Does so. Palazian fights forward from the split back position. And he well, picks up. Rafi did a nice job. He's going to be close to the first down, maybe. Picks up Let's see where they move yards. the sticks. Here on the replay again, you can see that they see the hole right away, the outside. They're just taking the outside. Really They're not taking the it in. Now, timeout called on the field. Okay, with 2.22 left in the game. And they're going to move the chains. It was a first down, and as the rain continues to come down here. You know, in these uh, rainy days, if you're on the winning team, it's great to be out there. But if you get in trouble, <laughs> if you're on the losing team, it gets wet. You better believe it. So <laughs> with 222, 222 on the scoreboard, 14 to 6, Academy lead. Timeout called by St. Greg's, and now it's really coming down. It is coming down. We got a we got a torrential downpour here. Whoever our cameramen are, I hope you're staying dry. So now the cactus is happy see this rain, happy to be on the field, happy about everything today. The cheerleaders going crazy, trying to get the crowd into the game, trying okay. to get the crowd to do their rain dance. It looked like they're at about the seven-yard line or eight-yard line, first down. First and goal from about the seven or eight-yard line. Lake Forest Academy would love to hammer it in here. Even our lines and hash marks are getting washed. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to tell. Over to the left. Injuries. Tries to fight off the Cactus. Now, Rafi Palagian, is he going to get his first touchdown of the year? Yes. Yes, and he goes in untouched. Six points. Same play that Academy. they just ran before, Chris. That's Rafi Palagian right. And now, the Academy up 20-6 to six on a nice run. Here it is again. They've gone to the split back running game almost the whole second half. The whole so. second half. Again, just ball control. Not trying to do anything fancy in this weather. 
And uh, it's, it's a play that's going to work today. Kalaji with his arm in the air. Celebrates the touchdown. Now the Cashy going for two again. Trying to get it to 22-6. to six. With 2.16 to go, however, St. Greg is hard-pressed to make a comeback here. Tim Martin in the game now at the running back spot, along with Rafa Kalaji. We haven't seen them in the, together yet, have we? Um, I think they've been in one other time. Now Stephens is going to hand to Kalaji. And we got a fumble. Ball is loose. Going forward into the end zone, but no two-point conversion. There have been no extra points. Recovered by uh, St. Gregory's. So you can't advance that. So now the catch will come out to kick off. Well, it does look like the LFA will get their first win of the year, and uh, the team's got to feel good about this. Uh, here on this last play for the, the two-point conversion, the ball, he? He, just he just out. never got it. He slipped right through and his hands. I'll tell hands. you what, uh, it's like Christian Holland, if he had seen the ball, the Chiefs could he have could, had his first score of his career. You better believe it. Just the ball on that for two points. The only two we've seen today, however, was the safety that the Cashews got. Uh, I pretty much I would say that Danette here on the kickoff would probably just keep it down the middle again like she did kick the last one. Looks like John was giving her some instructions right at the, at the end there to try to keep it low. Keep, keep it low. No reason trying to kick it deep. Danette, for those of you who didn't tune in last week, the female kicker for Lake Forest Academy, first female player in Academy history. The strong leg set to boot it down the field to the brown and white uniform for St. Greg's now with all the mud on him. They let it go through the first man. The second man for St. Greg gets it. It looks like Rich Malad again, and number 50. Or 63 it could have been, maybe. Let's take a look here when we get out of this pot on here. They're still coming up. Works his way up to about the 40-yard line of St. Greg's. At 62 it was. 62, Colin, Colin Simpson. Simpson. Here you can see the academy setting up their blocking scheme, trying to nail Simpson, and he's met and brought down by a host of taxi tacklers there. Forced down. 2.01, two minutes now, 1.59, and clock a, rolls. And about their 38-yard line. St. Greg's walks up to the ball now. LFA is going to play definitely a little prevent here. They got one guy back about 20 yards. I back to St. Greg's. A lot, again, the back in the backfield. He's rolling out to his outside. Just cannot, you know, he can't turn can't the corner. Going. And he's angry. He knows. He's aggravated now. He just can't get his footing. He can't quite get the turn. He's tired. He, he just doesn't slipper. have the speed right now. As you can see, they're shooting the linebackers through the gaps, LFA, and they're just saying, look for that quick pitch to him and just run the angle and bring him down. That's Tim Martin. Tim Martin did a nice job picking him up high, too, to get him down. You know, Bill, also doing a nice job today were the taxi cheerleaders cheering hard the whole game. Jenny Billings, Tanisha Davis, Ahaza Pasuk, Ann Drake, Sarah Harold, Danita Jareth. Katie Key, Vanessa Long, Kelly Randall, and Tamika Rockingham. Hopefully they're staying dry. Probably didn't happen. They, you know, I don't think they care. Today. They're just so happy to see a win. Gloria Harper got a little fired up for this mm -hmm. game. And there's the pitch from a lot. On a reverse. reverse. Nice looking reverse, but can he keep his feet? The man with the ball there, number, number 27, 27, Ortiz. Rolling forward and manages to get out of bounds. Robbie Urs does a good job of taking him down. 27 is Marcus Ortiz. And he's aggravated. You know, if he could have kept him his feet, I think he thinks he would have been gone. Well, yeah. definitely. Here you can see on the replay here, it is a nice play. I mean, they set it up. They string it out. LFA's pursuit is all going wide. They just saw the linebackers shooting the gap, and he takes it to the outside. Urs does a good Urs job. does a nice guy job chasing him down. And no one else was there. So now with 35 seconds, the clock is rolling. St. Greg's taking their time in the huddle. They have the ball at about the 35, 45-yard line. Ball sitting in Cashew territory right on the Cashew 45. Into the game now for the Cashews. That's number 14, Steve Gray, the freshman, taking the place of Christian Holland on the defensive line. St. Greg's coming up in the eye backfield with 13, 12 seconds left. The handoff up the middle of Milad. He's working his way towards the sideline, hammering over a few runners, now being thrust back. Five Cashew tacklers, a fumble. I think that's going to be the last play and of the game. They're going to call this game over 20 to 6. Cashew victory. Cashew's cheering now. Break the losing streak, and they're all over the field. Well, that's a nice win for LFA considering the conditions that we had right now. Uh, also, it was a nice game by St. Gregory's. Gregory's, uh, St. Gregory's did their job. They stopped them when they needed to in the third quarter, but they just couldn't get their offense going in the second half. I think uh, I should tell you about who was working today. Now, Pat Reister, Joey Kale, and Matt Shapiro on the cameras. Instant replay was Matt Shapiro and Pat Reister doing double duty today. Tony Reed on sound, Bob Reed on the graphics. And the technical director and director, Andy Reed, today, the whole Reed family out here to help you. Special thanks to Steve Luria for technical assistance today. I'm Chris Dosois with Bill Bowler on LFTV Channel 19, where the Cashews have won this game 
20 to 6. And I'll tell you, Bill, I think that safety in the uh, second half really was the turning point. Oh, definitely. It got them uh, fired up and uh, got them great position the next time that they got the ball. And I think the next possession they went in for the score. Mm -hmm. So good job for them. So 20 to 6 is your final score here from Alumni Field where the Cactuses will get their first win of the year and St. Greg's remains without a victory. 